When you're adopting Vault, there's a journey. And this journey is not, I'm going to do it in six months or 12 months. It's a journey that never ends because secrets management is something that you can always evolve upon. You can always tighten up your security. You can al always you know, de-risk what some of the different threats are that are available uh, out there in the world today. And so that's always going to change. There's always going to be new attack vectors. And so it always makes sense to tighten up your security. And so the crawl portion of this is just getting Vault stood up and centralizing your secrets. How do I take all of the secret sprawl that exists today and put them in one place so that I can properly manage who can access what, when did they access it, et cetera. And so by centralizing those secrets and putting proper uh, ACLs around it, you're moving a huge step in the right direction because you can at least wrangle all the secrets that are out there. All right, when you're looking to walk, the way you want to think about it is now that in the crawl stage, you centralized everything, how do you make consumption of those secrets easier? And so this often is through your orchestration tools. So can your orchestration tools actually facilitate the secure introduction of those secrets to the underlying consumer? And so maybe it's a VM and you're using a tool like Terraform to securely introduce secrets into the VM. Maybe it's a Kubernetes and you want to inject those secrets into the different pods that may be consuming them. Maybe it's sitting on metal or it is on a VM, but that application isn't aware of the orchestration system and you want to put a helper daemon like console template or mconsole that can retrieve the secrets as a sidecar and inject those into the file system or an environment variable. So it's really about the life cycle of those applications that you stored centrally and ensuring that all the applications that are consuming them can do so easily. And that way you don't have to rewrite all of the thousands of applications that are legacy that you've written over time, but you've also provided an easy way for your greenfield applications that may be running on some newer orchestration platforms like Kubernetes to be able to consume that in a safe manner. Now, as you move on to the run, it's how do we tighten up the time in which a secret that got exposed can actually be used. And so we implement what we call dynamic secrets. Can I, as a requester of a secret, get a different secret every time I make that request? Can I have a tight TTL on it so that if I leave the company as a consultant, or if I'm a container that just got moved to a different host, can I ensure that that secret gets cleaned up and I don't have to have a human that's responsible for remembering to go revoke that secret? What we end up with is tens of thousands of secrets if we're doing this right, and a system like Vault is able to actually keep track of and manage all the different leases on those secrets for you, so that if someone were to get onto a host that happened to have a secret sitting on disk, that credential probably isn't good anymore if you have aggressive of enough TTLs. The next piece of run is encryption as a service, and ensuring that all of your data that you've been passing around your network and storing in databases can't be compromised because it's encrypted by those encryption keys sitting within your centralized secrets management solution.